Hey guys, what's up? This is the next part. If I'm sounding a little bit nosy and nasally, it's because I'm still recovering from that flu that I had, but it's um, it's getting better. That's why I didn't even mention it, so just want to put that out there. You can rest easy. I'm not dying. At least I hope not. Uh, but if I do, you know, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Anyway, yeah, I want this to be my final part because this phone is really giving me problems. And I, I don't want those issues to linger, to make it such that I can't finish this series, you know what I mean? Let me just get it out of the way. There is an attack on the church right now, a massive one. It's a flying kick in the cosmos, frankly, and I can feel it. The barrage is extreme. The hostile mistreatment of my person is as a result of it by those who are, who are in my ecosystem. And I've been feeling like I'm wasting time. But the Lord has confirmed that he is about to separate the wheat from the tares. And like I said, I'm not sure if that's the rapture or some kind of a record set straight event in the sense that God is going to make it clear who belongs to him and who doesn't um, should it be God making it clear who belongs to him and who doesn't not so much through the rapture but through a natural providential process of exposing false preachers for what they are this is what I have got to um, say about this attack on Christianity and attack on the body of Christ and us being beleaguered on all sides and having men and women revile our names hoping that everybody's just gonna run with what they're saying that false witness Redemption, you guys, is a spiritual affair. It is a supernatural, therefore, affair. And because it is supernatural, natural means cannot bring down what it is that God is doing with his children. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, given that the Holy Spirit, sorry, the Word of God is a double-edged sword, separating between bone and marrow, soul and spirit, able to differentiate between the thoughts and intentions of mankind entirely. You can therefore trust as a Christian that is outnumbered vastly in your ecosystem and being persecuted by those who outnumber you and who also wear a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of constitution around themselves in that they're not saved. They obviously are not born again. They're not bearing fruit. But the world out there does not know. The world is unaware entirely. Just the true character of this person that is bad mouthing you. Understand that the world does not have to know the true character of the bad mouther. The world does not also have to know your true character as a Christian to figure figure out who here is the right person because remember like I said in the first part from our belly flows rivers of living water from our hearts flow, flow the issues of life uh, the the you know from the abundance of our hearts the mouth speaks our effervescence for Jesus our earnestness in him it evaporates out of our pores like sweat it, it is just so part and parcel of our nature that even when we wake up out of a nightmare or a good dream the first words on our mouths are generally heavenly because we belong to another kingdom and this is a spiritual thing you can't fake or pose or pretend to be christian and be believable because it's a supernatural process so if you have not supernaturally been transformed if you have not spiritually been transformed you will automatically default into your nature we are born as human beings dead in trespasses and sins and in sin did our parents conceive us being slaves to sin therefore we will naturally default into our sinful nature when we are not indwelt by the holy spirit who enables us by himself to put the deeds of the body to death so if you don't have that enabler you will default to your sinful nature however if you do have that enabler you will be making a war with your flesh like it is written in romans 7 that uh aggression against the kingdom of darkness that you walk in essentially attacking it because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force that whole activity that you walk in you must trust for the life of you is going to ultimately vindicate you before men it's written in god's word that trust in the lord your god lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and you will make your paths straight the scriptures also make it a claim that um you know, if you commit your ways to the Lord, he will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your vindication or your cause like the noonday sun. You will shine bright like the sun and it'll come naturally when you are in that very jar of clay type my battery is low and this thing is going to cut me. We are treasure in jars of clay. Do you understand what I'm saying? And being treasure in jars of clay, albeit having an outward appearance that is not seemly, not, not comely, there's nothing ornate or ostentatious or showy about it. There is nothing about you just like Jesus that is, you know, to be desired. Uh, nonetheless, the treasure inside you is going to emanate from through the cracks of that jar of clay such that those who are truly called of God will hear your voice for you are speaking in him and you will be able to lead them out for you are led by him you will lead crowds to christ as he promised you to be a fisher of men i'm very disquieted guys by the fact that i'm on 10 percent battery power and it like keeps on going down 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 so i'm just going to stop recording and then put this phone on a charger and then carry on 
Hey, what's up? Okay, so my phone is sitting on the bum of a charger and it's therefore falling apart. So let's just keep it there. I'm not going to keep this long because I've got issues with the phone. And having these issues means I have to finish this and invest in a camera. But thank God I've got the money to do so. So as soon as the funds clear, we're going to clear water more to procure a camera. Anyway, right on. I was speaking in the previous part that I had to cut short because of battery issues, that uh, from our bellies flows rivers of living water and that the redemption process or the calling to Christ process is a supernatural process, it is spiritual and it therefore responds to spiritual the spiritual realm and given that it responds to the spiritual realm, if you're called by God, you will hear from the section of the spirit realm that belongs to Jesus and not so much demons, therefore you are not going to be duped for too long by a charlatan. You're not going to be duped for too long by someone that's not really coming in the spirit of truth so a fake pastor or a fake evangelist somebody that's just you know with a profession of faith a mere profession of faith but they don't actually have a real relationship with jesus christ they're not going to dupe you for much too long so this is a comfort to the body of christ who especially just like me are very severely reviled by their ecosystem and the people who have reviled them just have got this christian activity happening in their lives in the sense that they're always in church on sunday by back in the bible cells that group they are um, ever talking the Bible they carry them at you know they're always using the name of Jesus etc these people praise me with their lips but their hearts are far from me understand that their fruit don't even have to expose them in the sense that for instance they're fornicators or they're cohabiting um, you know outside of marriage or they've got a secret like homosexual lifestyle or they are a drunk on the weekends and they're always partying it up a storm uh, with debauched part with, with debauched parties Either, you don't even have to catch them in the act you don't have to bust them smoking weed you you don't they just will flounder they will faint they will fizzle away do you understand they will melt they will it, it's gonna be like you're pouring hydrochloric acid on their bodies or sulfuric acid the way that they're just gonna dissolve in the presence of the real sun and by sun i mean s-u-n and s-o-n in other words you know how it's written in i believe proverbs 34 somewhere that commit your ways to the lord and he will do this he will make your righteousness shine like the sun and the justice of your cause or your vindication so shine like the dawn sorry and the justice of your cause or your vindication like the noonday sun okay let's say that again commit your ways to the lord and he will do this he will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun so when you truly belong to the sun, S-O-N, you will shine like the sun, S-U-N, and the rays of your sunniness are going to melt. They are going to boil. They're going to burn a false disciple in your grill. You won't even have to enter into debate with them, but your meek and lowly disposition and your natural flow in the things of God will cause people to naturally sort of kind of gravitate towards you. If God is calling them, understand that there will be those that will gather for themselves indeed as the scriptures have prophesied. A great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear because they will not endorse sound doctrine. You will always get people who love to be swayed to and from by every wind of doctrine. Individuals that are according to God, twice written, uh, uh, uprooted, twice removed. People that are clouds without rain. People that are deliberately disinterested in truth. And mind you, they will be more numerous in number. You need to understand that as well as a Christian. Because narrow is the road that leads to life and few people find it. So there, there will be the majority of human beings are very flatly going to pass you shade. So do not count yourself as one who is failing in your endeavor to bring people to Jesus when the numbers are not exorbitant. Count yourself as one who is prosperous because somebody who has led out, the, someone who was a sheep that heard his voice that was led out, heard and chose to break away from the crowd and join you. If heaven rejoices when just one sinner repents, we ought rejoice when out of a crowd of a hundred people, only two people come to listen to our particular message instead of a very flamboyant, ornate, showy, ostentatious, flailing itself hands and feet like a drowning person in a pool uh, evangelist on this side that is calling themselves of God, like some charismaniac that is chilling on this end, unbearing of any fruit at all. The crowds will gather around him like black jacks on wool more than they will on you. But you must recall this, the Lord will make out of you fisher of those that indeed are the men called to the kingdom of heaven. So even if it's just two people out of that giant crowd that break away, you've done a great job. Heaven rejoices when just one of them repents. So if you've gotten two, you've celebrated in heaven 
heaven. You've caused the celebration in heaven twice over. So do not allow yourself to faint over numbers, all right? A lack of them. Do not allow yourself to faint over being reviled, over somebody speaking smack about you. Because remember, the justice of your vindication will ultimately shine like the noonday sun. Next part.